Hey, Team Jesus, and those who maybe are watching online, found us online, glad to have you with us for our online worship. Today, our job is to encourage you, and your job is to encourage others. That's what St. Paul wants us to take out of Romans chapter 11. So let's get going in our encouragement as we sing our first song. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read sections of Psalm 67 responsibly. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God, let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the people with equity, and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase, God our God shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent his Son, Jesus, to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1 and verses 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, Keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 11. We'll be reading verses 1 and 2a, 13 through 15, and 28 to 32. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means, for I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake, but as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient, in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now sing the Alleluia and the verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to Hey boys and girls, it's Deaconess Kim with a special message for our kids this morning. I have a question for you to start off with. Have you ever disobeyed your parents? That means you did something they told you not to do, or you didn't do something that they told you to do. I'm sure we all have at some point, right? I know I have. And what happened? Did you get in trouble? Maybe you had to sit in time out or get your tablet or a toy taken away. Maybe you even had to skip dessert. And how did you feel about that? Maybe you were angry. Maybe you felt bad. But how do you think your parents felt when you didn't listen? Maybe they were angry or disappointed. But do you think that means that your parents didn't love you? Of course not. Our parents give us rules and ask us to do things because they love us and they're teaching us. They want us to listen and obey so we grow healthy and stay safe. 
And the same thing happens with God. God gives us very good rules to help us live well. He wants us to rely on him and to care for other people. When we sin, we're breaking God's rules. And that makes God sad and also upset. But God still loves us. He loves us even when we break his rules and don't obey him. In fact, he loves us so much that he sent Jesus to take our punishment. It's like Jesus got sent to time out even though I'm the one who broke a plate. That's what happened when Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He took all our sins away. As Christians who believe in God, we should always try to obey him and live the way God wants us to live. That's one way we show that we really believe. But it's really good to know that even when we mess up, even when we sin, God forgives us. He always loves us and is always ready to forgive us. And that is really good news. So let's fold your hands, bow your heads, and pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much for loving me. I'm sorry that sometimes I do bad things. I'm sorry for my sin. Help me obey your rules and help me tell other people about your love and your forgiveness. Thank you for Jesus. In his name, amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So if there's any chapter that really is is meant to be encouraging in the midst of Romans, uh, perhaps in this way, in times like we're facing today, this Romans chapter 11 can be that which reminds us about the encouragement that we need and the encouragement that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Of course, in the last chapter of Matthew, he records before he goes back into heaven that, that I will be with you to the end of the age. And, and certainly it's comforting to know that, that Christ is with us and that is his promise. But even more so, the community in which he has left us, his church, you and me, Team Jesus, well, that's meant to be encouraging too. And chapter 11 really helps the church to sort that sort of thing out, this 
this importance of, of community, this importance of, of supporting and encouraging one another because, well, if we don't have that support, we're easy to be attacked. One of the slogans that we're having during this pandemic is this, we're all in this together. Maybe you've seen that. I, I, I've seen a couple of people that were even actually sick of this. Um, we're all in this together kind of stuff. And, and that's unfortunate that, that they're maybe not quite connecting that in the right way or in the proper way or whatever. But, but when it comes to his church, the body of Christ, this has a lot of meaning. So we, we could say perhaps the pandemic, people that were promoting this togetherness have stolen it really from the church because after all, in Christ we are one and in Christ we have been made to help and encourage one another. So in chapter 11, St. Paul begins with this question. Has God rejected his people? Well, obviously, he's not talking to God or, or asking God. This is, this is a rhetorical question that St. Paul is, is asking. Has God rejected his people? See, the Jews and the Gentiles are both going to be reminded that, that they are both God's children. This has been St. Paul's argument all throughout Romans, even up to this point. But rather that whether you are a Jewish Christian or a, a Gentile Christian or, or whatever, as you've come together, you are one in Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, rivalry has been in the church forever. Remember back uh, even when the disciples were following Jesus, uh, James and John, the son of Zebedee, right before Jesus is going to go to the cross to die for you and for me and for, for them, they're angling about who can be sitting on Jesus' right hand and who can be sitting on Jesus' left hand. Whoever is the greatest, Jesus says, well, that'll be the one that's, that's serving the other. See, Jesus said, I mean, in his own words there in Mark 10, or, or Jesus didn't come to be served, he rather came to serve. And in case you missed the point in, in this whole, how this works, St. Mark also says that how this ends is in the crucifixion, right? Jesus gives his life as a ransom for many. Talk about serving one another. That's, that's you and me that, that Jesus gave his life for. Throughout chapter 11, this is, this is what St. Paul is trying to do. He's, he's trying to expressly show how both groups are meant to be encouraging one another. And as we look at Team Jesus even today, that's a big part of what we should be about and, and what we are about. That is to encourage one another. We'll talk about encouragement. Check out the picture of our confirmants. All right, so the masks were off for only a few seconds as we took those pictures uh, because, of course, we didn't want to, uh, uh, we, we abide by all the rules. But, but again, uh, what encouragement. These confirmands standing up there and, and confirming the faith which God gave to them in their baptisms. Well, these confirmands will, will definitely have something to talk about. We kind of joked about that, and it was fun service. I, I really enjoyed it. it. Even though it was just the family that was present there sharing in this joyful experience, it was still special. And it was that sense of community that, that truly, indeed, made it special. I mean, of course, all the certainly stuff that, that was surrounding it, because probably many family members weren't being able, able to be here to, to share in that joy and, and all of those types of things that were involved with the pandemic that we're dealing with on a, a daily basis. Sure, that was a negative cloud perhaps on that confirmation day because it, of course, wasn't even on Palm Sunday when it was supposed to be. But think about that for a second, and I reminded them that, right? They'll have something that they can tell their children and their, their great grandchildren, right? They were the, they were the coronavirus confirmands. But all things considered, this probably isn't going to be the biggest challenge of their faith walk in Jesus. 
Unfortunately, we know that that to be true. Statistically, we, we know that, that those after confirmation don't always stick around the church. I'm hopeful that perhaps this, this pandemic will, will it keep them closer. Maybe it will help them to form a, a special bond between one another that would encourage them as they, as they move forward in their walk with their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in this community in which they find themselves up, again, up with. Because the world, well, the world is the one that statistically takes it out on, on those that confirm their faith. Of course, when we confirm our faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that which was given to us in baptism, it's like we put a target on us, right? That's been spoken before by a, a famous theologian, right? And, and, and Satan puts his arrows and nuclear weapons aimed at that person to get them to fall away from the faith. We're experiencing that same type of thing through this, this pandemic, unfortunately. I mean, by conservative estimates that are being made out there right now, and this is across denomination lines, and, and, and including the non-denominationals and all of that, but, but they're suggesting that 30% have just simply walked away, stopped watching online, not coming, checked out. And if you're one of the ones that's watching today, or if you're going to be one that's coming here on Sunday morning to watch or to, to be here on the on-site worship, well, unfortunately, you're only in that 50% category. And that's 50% that check in once every four hours weeks. Boy, that can be discouraging. And not only on that, Barner reports are, are, are digging in a little bit deeper into the sense of community that's being lost. And in fact, they're showing that, that, that those that were practicing Christians in the midst of this pandemic, being separated from the sense of community that you find in the church, 17% are saying they're, they're feeling bored all the time. Another 11% at least once a day have feelings of insecurity or, or uncertainty that comes up with that. Hopefully you see the importance of, of staying connected with your church family, with your church friends. Maybe that's a good thing to do is, is to at least check in with, with one of them this week. I posted this online. Kevin Yoakum, actually a son of the congregation who's a pastor down in Florida, shared this on his Facebook post. And <laughs> frankly, I just busted out laughing when I saw that. So I don't know if you see that. It's uh, <laughs> a little bit of, uh, of, of a play, and I'm sure you, you recognize uh, the character in there. But um, man, that is just way too funny to a certain extent. But also with any kind of humor, there's a little bit of truth to that too. See, see, pastors aren't immune to the emotional challenges that are that are going on with this pandemic. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of challenges. There's, there's a lot that pastors are dealing with. And I have to fess up too that, you know, certainly that's that's part here too. So just Certainly a reminder that, you know, that you, you, you need to be praying for your pastors, but, but also praying for your church leaders. Because we need prayer. We need that support. We need that encouragement. And time and time again, we see that St. Paul wrote to churches and to people like Timothy to encourage them encourage them in their walk with the Lord. Although it's not in the text today, but, but immediately following one of the sections where we skip over is the story of Elijah. You remember that time when, when Elijah had predicted the, the drought that was going to take place? In three and a half years, there was this drought. And so at, at this big climactic point, there is I, Elijah against the 450 prophets of Baal. And the challenge that Elijah throws down because the people are wishy-washy, they're floating between worshiping Baal and, and worshiping God, 
Elijah said, let's just settle this right once and for all. And of course, you know the story. They put the two altars up and, and the prophets of Baal are calling out to Baal. And, and Elijah's a little bit joking with them because, of course, he knows that Baal is not going to answer their prayers and they're, they're cutting themselves. And, you know, Elijah's like, what's the matter? Is he, Maybe he's in the bathroom. Maybe that's why he can't come to your help because he knows that there's only one true God. And then he tells them at this point, whoever wins this battle, whoever brings fire down from heaven, that is the one that we're going to worship. That is the God that we are going to follow. And of course, Elijah, when he prays to Yahweh, the true God, he, that exactly happens. That fire comes down from heaven. And, and, and even to kind of add insult to injury on it, Elijah has them pour water and it, to really make it difficult for God to accomplish, but of course, nothing is too impossible for God. And after this great victory, and, and the people say they're going to follow God, and they slaughter the 450 prophets of Baal, the rain restores and comes back. But then, King Ahab's wife Jezebel promises that, that he, she is going to see to it that Elijah gets the same treatment that the 450 prophets of Baal received. And Elijah is scared and he runs away. And in fact, he feels so isolated, he feels so separate that he, he just even calls out to God that, you know, I, I'm no better. I'm no better than, than my forefathers. Just, I, I wish I were dead. He's feeling that alone. And of course, God hears him and, 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 and encourages him and strengthens him and then also promises him. He said, you're not alone. I have 7,000 that have faithfully not bowed the kneel or kissed the bales. You are not alone. You are never alone. And see, that encourages us too. And it's no wonder St. Paul uses this in 11 to encourage because, because I know I've heard it. There's a lot of people that are, that are feeling very much alone out there with this, this loss of community. Unfortunately, the discipleship conference in August got canceled. That's going to be in Memphis. And, and again, I like to go to these types of conferences. The pastor's conference, even too, uh, that's at Margaritaville, right? Tantara changed its name to Margaritaville. And I always love going there because, it's, again, you just get to be encouraged by your fellow brothers pastors and 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 this year it would have been an all church conference so you get together with uh, even my a lot of my relatives show up there too because they're also in ministry um, there so it's it's kind of fun to be able to see them but yeah that too was canceled but this Sunday this or this past week I, I, I was reminded once again because there was the uh, kickoff of the 2022 LCMS National Youth Gathering and I was encouraged I was encouraged because I'm reminded that maybe, maybe perhaps in 2022 in that summer, things will be back to normal where we can do something like a national youth gathering that gathers this time will be in, in Houston. And Lord willing, this will indeed take place because, because our youth need it. Those that were confirmed this, this past Sunday, they'd be, they're eligible to go to this wonderful event. And it's so encouraging. It's so empowering because you have all these great speakers. And I know you've heard us talk about this thing before, and it's just very encouraging. But the most encouraging aspect of that is that they're surrounded by 20,000 of their peers that are gathered in huge stadiums, worshiping and praising the one that unites them. And that, of course, is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Team Jesus, we need each other. More now than, than ever before. As we're reminded, remember when, when, when after Jesus had risen from the dead and, and, and there's that exchange where, where St. Peter and Jesus are talking on the shore over breakfast. And Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And Of course, Peter says, I do love you. And, and, and this is repeated three times and and, and Peter's just basically pouring his heart out to, to Jesus. Of course, you know that, that I love you. How, you know, how much more can I show that? You know my heart. 
You know my mind. And each time, Jesus simply says, feed my sheep. So he was encouraging St. Peter for that, for that which was to come. To be encouraging one another, the church, the body of Christ. You see, that's, that's our calling. That's what we were created for. And we're trying to provide opportunities for us to, to still gather in, in certain ways, whether it's a, a tailgate or, or a program here or there or a work day or, or what have you. And, and so hopefully, if you feel that you are able and that's safe, that you can, you can do these things. But I encourage you, because it doesn't matter where we are at, if we are, if we are shut up at home or what have you, that we can reach out to at least one other Team Jesus member. It's that simple. And I, I throw that challenge out to you. And it's just, it's just to encourage, to remind them that they are loved, that Christ loved them, to remind them of forgiveness. That's my prayer for you guys this week. And, and I pray that this will be encouraging to you too, to be reminded that, that Christ indeed loves us and forgives us and that that this Team Jesus can't be, can't be shut down even in the midst of a pandemic. Because we are, after all, called to care for one another and to encourage one another and, and to pray for one another. This is what we were made to do in Christ Jesus. Amen. And may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Hopefully by now you know how to continue contributing your tithes and offerings to the Lord's kingdom work. We will continue to post these slides during our offering time. A prayer I often recite during our offering time comes from the Lutheran hymnal, hymn 441. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. May we continue to be faithful in being good stewards of his gifts. Go team. Our announcements for this Sunday, just a reminder about the bloopers reel. Uh, see the Team Jesus news about that, but we have a form that you can fill out. Again, laugh with us as we uh, have had some bloopers over these, these pandemic times, so you can uh, see how funny we actually are. So... Also, just um, remember the community workday, September 13th. The signups are available online for that. Follow your Team Jesus News for that information. Also, in the Team Jesus News, we've got uh, projects that you could be a part of. Um, if you're looking for something to do, uh, most of these that are on here would uh, enable you to be safe in, in a social distancing type of manner. So, ways that you can still serve your church. Um, also, looking forward to the... Uh, discipleship journey. So remember on September 20th, we're going to be kicking off our rally day. Um, we have a discipleship program beginning in the Bible study, uh, you know, on site here. And also our Sunday school will take place live. So there's a lot of information coming out on that. So uh, stay tuned to that. And again, just a couple more donations still needed for our golf tournament that'll be on 29. So lots of honor to opportunities to serve. Um, also, if you're interested in, in transferring God's blessings to the ones that you love, if you haven't had an opportunity already to sit down with Terry, um, you can take that opportunity. We, we had a video that was shot out this week. So if you're wanting to learn a little bit more information about that, you can watch the video or, or tune in and grab a, a pamphlet that we have on that um, on the Connection Center. All right. Those are our announcements for the week. Have a blessed week in the Lord. At this time, we'll make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning in our prayers, we want to continue to pray for Milwaukee Lutheran School. They're coming under uh, quite a bit of attack for holding to their uh, biblical beliefs. Um, again, praying for all schools as uh, we just continue to get ready. Like the skit guys reminded us last week, um, just uh, want to keep that all the schools in prayers. Also, prayers for Clara. This is Terry's uh, brother-in-law's mother that suffered a stroke. Also for Roy Barrett, struggling with some heart issues following surgery. First for John and family, uh, son of Tammy that tested positive for COVID-19. And again, just continue prayers for all those suffering from that, including uh, Kim Gladden with uh, prayers for um, just her continued battle with cancer. And then uh, Margaret and Pam and Rita and Aunt Rinny, all members of our church that are uh, in facilities that have uh, that are, are dealing with the coronavirus too. So, also a prayer uh, for the Koenig family. Um, Montana Koenig uh, took her life. This is a family friend of uh, several here at Luther at church. A connection to Lutheran High School too. Um, I just uh, took her own life. So we just want to pray for that family. And for her husband, Jordan, especially uh, during this time. And just uh, just a prayer again for those suffering with uh, uh, those mental issues that go on with related to these types of things. So, so let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the church throughout the world. Give her wisdom and strength to be a powerful witness to the world of your love. We ask you to bless those in our community through us 
Give us your eyes to see and your heart to embrace the loss so many more will be added to your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, strengthen and heal those who are ill and in need of your care, especially we pray for uh, those in Milwaukee at the schools, just all those uh, returning to school. Pray for Clara, for Roy, for John and family, and for Kim, for Margaret and Pam and Rita and Aunt Rennie, uh, and all those fa facilities that are facing the coronavirus. Give those who seek your help in time of hardship and confusion every assistance and guidance that they need for their lives, especially those that are battling mental illness. Help us to care for and show compassion for those suffering from depression and other mental illnesses. We, uh, we mourn the death of Montana Koenig and just pray that you would uh, comfort that family uh, with the certain hope of the resurrection that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grant comfort and peace uh, in that home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, through baptism, you have called us together through your Son, Jesus Christ, into this great community. Lead us to daily remember that our bapt of our baptism and the blessings that you give to us each day in our baptism. So we celebrate with Chelsea, Mason, Addie, Blanca, Carter, Odin, and Heather as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Lead them and all of us to hear your word, to trust in it, and to give witness to it in, in our lives daily. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father who loves to shower gifts upon his children, we give you thanks and praise for the precious gift of marriage, and we rejoice with Shane and Heather, Jerry and Stephanie, Al and Brenda, Chuck and Pam, Mike and Vicki, and Troy and Julie as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them in all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray that you will be with all that are beginning a new school year. Bless all the teachers with wisdom to teach and bless all students with a willingness to learn. Lord, especially we ask for the patience and protection from the coronavirus in the many schools that are going to be gathering. We ask that you would have our schools be places where students and teachers are free from all harm and danger and evil this year. We pray especially for our association schools. Continue to pour out your blessing upon Lutheran High School of Kansas City and Martin Luther Academy as they begin their school years this week so that these institutions continue to develop uh, your children into future pastors, teachers, missionaries, and church leaders in your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, we pray for our leaders in government. Remind them of their duty to bring justice and righteousness to all the peoples of the world. We pray for our police officers and, and ask uh, that you would uh, protect and surround them with your love and care. Put an end to all violence and hatred in our communities so that your gospel may spread in many places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen.